I don't know, I can't remember exactly how often the museum was open, but for sure it was open on Sunday afternoon, and for sure my mother was there and I was too. Volunteers would open the museum on Sunday afternoon, and my mother-in-law said, would you be interested in opening the museum on Sunday afternoon? I said, well, I'd be happy to. And what I remember as my first memory is the smell of linseed oil and oil paints because my uncle had a studio on, in the back portion of the museum behind the galleries. I would spend my afternoons wandering around the museum, looking at all the sculptures and the paintings. I couldn't tell you the titles or the artist, but when I see them in the museum today, I recognize them. And I just love being there and just enjoying the art. S some Sundays you would have a fairly decent crowd. Some Sundays you might not have but one or two people. But there were always women uh, helping with the teas, helping with the flower arrangements, helping with, with gatherings, um, serving on the board. I think the, the women have been a real guiding force in the museum. I uh, don't think it could be what it is today without the, the women. Because it's all so interconnected, you know, the past and the present and the future. It's a powerful connection. For a town this size to have a museum like this is just absolutely a breathtaking. great aunt, uh, Josephine Bonnewell Lyerly, was one of the original founders of the museum. I think she was an incredibly reserved person, very much behind the scenes, but she had the capacity to love art and to love this community. And I think she was a legend. summered in the mountains in Little Switzerland. And that's where she met Mr. Conroe. In the early 1940s, Wilford Conroe was a prominent portrait artist in New York City. He spent his summers in Little Switzerland, North Carolina, where he became acquainted with Paul Whitener. Paul Whitener was a student at Duke University. He was kind of tall and dark and slim and nice looking man and really nice man. <laughs> he was an extremely good looking guy. Mr. Conroe and Aunt Jo, they encouraged Paul to continue his art and there was a lot of talk about, well, why couldn't there be an art studio or an art museum in, in Hickory. And it was really Mr. Conroe and Aunt Jo who began to plant that seed with Paul Whitener. She was a guiding force for Paul. And I think that she knew that this was important for this community, for the longevity of this community. And it was important to her. But you know, behind every good man, there has to be a good woman. Of course, I loved Mickey Coe, who was the director for years. Mickey was a server at the inn in Little Switzerland, where all these artists gathered in the, in the summer. Mr. Conroe and Aunt Jo decided that Mickey and Paul should get together. So they encouraged Paul 
to, to ask Nikki out to date her. And that's how uh, Paul Whitener and, and Nikki Coe became husband and wife. Paul and Mickey got to Hickory and Paul started painting and he would get a few commissions from people to do portraits or uh, draw their houses or, or, or whatever they wanted. They began to talk around in the community and identified a small group of folks that were interested in art. My, my Aunt Mickey was one of my favorite relatives, if not my favorite relative, even though uh, she was um, no DNA relation to me. She was my aunt by marriage and uh, became director of the museum after my Uncle Paul died. But Mickey was, um, was, was always a strong person and a person who could make um, hard decisions and live with them. I think Mickey continues Paul's, you know, practice of inviting artists to have a show at the museum and then would either beg or buy one painting out of the show, hopefully with some help from the people who were supporting the museum in the beginning. And I was very close to her and just, just loved her. And Mickey, she was a flirt. She knew how to she knew how to get the money of the people who had money. <laughs> and I learned a great deal from her in doing it, following along. And uh, especially even after she no longer needed to climb ladders and pound nails, she she would come out, she would arrange, say this goes here, that go there. It didn't matter who she met or where she traveled what she'd done, there was always this little earthy mountain center that, um, that kept her grounded. And if it was not for Mickey and Thelma and their dedication, uh, we wouldn't have the museum today. They were just determined to carry on Paul's work, and they did. My mother was Laura Lee Wilfong, Mrs. Brian Wilfong, and she was one of the first women behind HMA. She had a, had a florist and uh, was very, very active in the museum. Uh, she took her linens and her dish, dishes for receptions. She did flowers for years and years and years for all the receptions. Laura Lee would come home and tell her husband, oh, we've got to do so-and-so at the museum, or we've got to do this for Paul, and he would just say, do as you please, do as you please. And that was his answer, was do as you please, so. My mother, with the full support of my father, was committed to the success of the museum. In 1954, the museum had an opportunity to acquire a significant collection in New York City. Paul Whitener asked if he could borrow our new 1954 Dodge station wagon to drive to New York to pick up the paintings. Paul came to her when there was a big sale and said, Lee." And, and there's this big sale in New York, and Mr. Shuford's out of town, and I need to go. The story is that Laura Lee, he didn't have a car, didn't have a car that he thought would make it to New York, and he needed some way to bring the paintings back, and so he wouldn't have to pay the freight. <laughs> so she loaned him her station wagon, gave him $1,000, and with that $1,000, he bought 21 paintings. I 
I think it's really important for such a small town as Hickory, North Carolina, to have this kind of culture. The museum was really a part of our lives growing up, and I'm so very appreciative. And really, I just want other families to experience the museum in many of the ways that we did. Museums in this country begin with some collector donating or even building his or her own museum to get things started. But in Hickory, the inspiration came first, and then the co collection was built, you know, one or two pieces at a time. There were so many and are so many that are so willing. I think it's incredible the people that have gone before us have grown this museum. And some of us who are still living, but the heritage of this building and this organization is phenomenal. And it makes us really proud to say that we are supporters and lovers of the Hickory Museum of Art. I just, I just think we're fortunate, and I think it's a true asset to Hickory. My hope is that the museum will continue to inspire the love of art for generations to come.